I'm Rich Carroll. This local news is a service of Flagler County's Toyota dealer, Beaver Toyota, here to wow you. Workers in the food service industry are the focus of the latest COVID vaccination effort in Flagler County. With vaccine supply exceeding demand, Flagler County Health Officer Bob Snyder says they've closed down their mass vaccination site at the fairgrounds and have fanned out with sites across the county. This week, there was a special emphasis on restaurant workers and patrons in Flagler Beach. We have begun um, vaccinating our essential workers, wait staff, cooks, bartenders at our restaurants and bars to keep them healthy and safe so that they can work and keep the rest of us happy and still having fun because we recognize the connection between managing COVID and the virus and keeping our small businesses up and running, you know, to promote a robust economy. Now, 10 bars and restaurants have taken us up on this offer, and the majority of them are allowing us to not only offer inoculations and vaccines to their staff, but to their patrons as well. So for that, we are extremely grateful. Two clinics next week with that focus will be Wednesday, May 5th from 10 a.m. till noon at the Anchor and then Thursday the 6th from 2.30 to 4.30 at the Oceanside Beach Bar and Grill. Snyder says they've also made accommodations for folks who can't easily schedule an appointment during the workday. So we're just going to be continuing along that path and we're also catching people after hours and on weekends at the airport. Last night we did 62 people at the airport because, you know, these we made it accessible to those who work 8 to 5, and we kept that clinic going until 7 o'clock at night. And we're also going to be partnering with the tax collector, Suzanne Johnson, and her team, because we're going to be at the Flagler Beach Tax Collector's office. I believe that starts next week for after-hour coverage. For details on the upcoming clinics, go to flaglercounty.org and hit the COVID-19 tab. As trash mounts in Flagler County, so do complaints against the county's trash company, WastePro. Amy Cherry has more. County Administrator Jerry Cameron says WastePro is experiencing an employment shortage. They do not have enough people at present to man their trucks. And in addition to that, the staffing services they use when they get into a shortage also don't have personnel available. And when they do have them available, there's approximately a a 50% increase in the cost of those people from what it was a couple of months ago. He says WastePro has job wanted ads out all over the place, but they're getting zero applications. Cameron says the problem isn't local, it's happening to private waste haulers all across the country. Not even possible to draw people in from other areas. Restaurants are affected by the shortage of workers too. We have restaurants that are having to reduce hours, having to close days because they can't staff and some of the restaurants are not providing in, in a restaurant service anymore because they can't find service. So it, it's a tough situation out there. WastePro says it's held job fairs and added new driver referral and retention bonuses in an effort to hire staff. From the WNZF Newsroom, I'm Amy Cherry. There's a new director of public information and engagement for the city of Palm Coast. Karen Johnson has the details. Palm Coast City Manager Matthew Morton has appointed Brittany Kershaw to the post. Kershaw will advance the city's outreach platforms while ensuring all Palm Coast residents and businesses receive timely and accurate information. I started at the sheriff's office and have made a big impact here, and I'm looking forward to doing the same at the city and letting the community know what's going on and how hard their city staff is working. In her role with the Flagler County Sheriff's Office, Kershaw increased the social media following by 700 percent and helped bridge the gap between law enforcement and the community through the use of social media during critical incidents and community events. She is driven to communicate the message of the city by humanizing the efforts of the employees and the way they deserve to be represented, according to Morton. Kershaw holds a bachelor's degree in English from the University of South Florida. She's developed award-winning communications programs and projects in the past. Her new role with the city of Palm Coast begins May 17th. For Flagler's Morning News, I'm Karen Johnson. What about the seniors? When you're a high school senior, there are certain rituals in which you partake, and one of those is your prom. By this time next week, both Palm Coast High School and Matanzas High School will have each honored their seniors with proms. District Safety Specialist with Flagler Schools, David Bosserdet, on how it happened for Matanzas High School. It's definitely not your typical prom. There isn't going to be any dancing. But what they're going to do is it's dinner and and games and activities. They're having an agri-science museum in Palm Coast with limited capacity, but we we did want to host an event for our seniors. 
to recognize them, and we're going to have safety precautions put in place. Matanzas prom was last weekend. Palm Coast Prom is coming up. Flagler Health Matters is on the radio every Saturday morning at 1130 on WNZF. You can listen to the podcast on the Flagler Radio app. From the WNZF Newsroom, I'm Deb Albertson. And now you're up to date on Flagler's Morning News. I'm Rich Carroll.